All right, it is now 7 o'clock. Welcome to the Monday, July 2nd meeting of the Board of Selectmen. Please join us for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Please note, this meeting is being made available to the public through a live video and audio broadcast on Comcast Government Access Channel 15 and is being recorded for broadcast at future dates. Comments made in open session will be recorded. And first up are the board action items is an introduced Police Chief Richard Wall and Town Clerk Margaret Stuzik. Welcome. Thank you very much. Welcome. Thank you. I had a few words to say, the reason why we're all here today. Um, first, I'd like to thank the Board of Selectmen for allowing the promotions to be made and at dawn for doing all the work to make it happen. Uh, I'd like to welcome everybody here tonight as we officially promote three Pembroke police officers to their new positions. Um, you're looking at the backbone, the future of Pembroke police. So there's been a great shift in policing since I started as a part-timer 34 years ago here. Back then, police were just considered warriors. We had a mission to enforce laws. We were all interchangeable parts of a bigger machine. We wore the same uniform. We were expected to do the same job. We even had to have the same attitude. We investigated crimes. We wrote reports, wrote tickets, locked up criminals, patrolled out of the area. Black and white, very easy. Well, I, our main task will still be law enforcement, and it always will be. Our delivery has changed, because today's police officers, they're, they're problem solvers. They have to rely on their experience, their common sense, their knowledge to recognize the smaller issues to lead to crime and do something about it before it becomes a crime. It's community policing. And today's police officers are guardian of the community. They use their positions to help others within their community. And they do that by accepting roles and responsibilities outside the realm of what we consider conventional policing. And uh, these officers here have all done that. And when I start talking about them individually, you'll understand that they really are the resources that this town needs. The three officers are here tonight to receive their next rank assignment. And they've done all the things that they're supposed to do. You're gonna find that they wear many more hats than just being a patrol officer. And in doing so, they've become a trusted resource for the residents of Pembroke and a valued asset of the past of our department, the present, and the future. So our first promotion to the rank of lieutenant is Wendy A. Lapierre. So Wendy's here tonight with her husband, Kevin in her children, Emma and Kyle. That's her mom, Cindy, her sister. Nephews, brother Chris, is, she brought a, a lot of the family today. She grew up in Pembroke, one of six. Graduated from Silver Lake, Pembroke campus. Oh, Kingston, sorry. You went to Kingston? <laughs> oh, okay. And uh, after graduation, enlisted in the Coast Guard. While she was in the Coast Guard, she went to Northeastern University, received her EMT, which she still carries today. Um, after honorable discharge, she got hired as a Pembroke police officer. I actually did your background investigation. In um, 2004, she received a bachelor's degree from Western New England College. During that time as a patrolman, she was the domestic violence investigator and advocate. She was assigned to the middle school as a school liaison. She was also assigned to investigate sexual assaults and child abuse. She was our triple A traffic hero for one year. In 2013, she was promoted to the rank of sergeant, where she added to her other assignments as she took care of sex offender registration, background investigations. She recently became a RAD, Rape Aggression Defense Instructor, and she's received the uh, Mass Police Training Council Life Saving Award. And she recently, last month, or May, graduated from Curry with a master's degree in criminal justice. So. Wendy, you ready?
discharge of the duties incumbent upon me. Duties incumbent upon me. As a duly appointed lieutenant. As a duly appointed lieutenant. For the Pembroke Police Department. For the Pembroke Police Department. In accordance with the bylaws of the town. In accordance with the bylaws of the town. The laws of the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. The laws of the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. And the United States of America. And the United States of America. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Who's got a Finn Wendy's badge? I mean, Lieutenant Lafayette's badge on. So before you get too comfortable, we have a regulation that describes the role of a Pembroke police lieutenant. Unfortunately, there's really no way of putting down on paper all the little intricacies you're going to be tasked with when you're exposed to this rank. Um, you're going to be the first at many things. You're actually the first command officer to have succession training in rank. You'll be able to work with the person you're taking over for. And that's the first, and I hope we get to do that more. It's the right way to do things. Um, there's a lot to learn in a short period of time. You'll uh, be the first lieutenant to be somewhat nomadic, as we have no office space for you, no room. <laughs> um, sorry for that, but you will get a key, a remote computer, and uh, the court officer has ponied up his car for the interim, so at least you'll have something decent to drive. Um, grants, hiring, background investigations, interview questionnaires are all on the agenda, and that's just this week. There's a lot more to do. Um, and you're going to be the very first person people call when the proverbial spit hits the fan. That's just the way it is. I just want to prepare you for that. It's too late to turn it down now. Um, you'll be expected to know all the laws, all the bylaws, and, and the rules, and, and the ways of the world. Even though you're not on patrol, you'll always be on patrol. People look up to you for that. And um, you're the first female lieutenant in this department, you were the first female. I just want people to take note that it's your work ethic, your caring and commitment that got you here. That's why you're a lieutenant. You're now a member of the command staff, and it's our responsibility to make sure that we provide the training, the direction, the ideals for our troops to carry out our mission. Um, you're dedicated. Uh, a dedication to service will earn, earn you the respect of the patrol officers, the gratitude of your fellow administrators, your friends, and your family. So thank you very much. Congratulations. Next on our agenda, Sergeant Ryan A. Botto. Ryan, will you stand up? Ryan's here with his wife, Jill, his daughter, Riley, his mom and dad, uh, Robert, Catherine, and his grandparents, who uh, his grandmom's on the advisory board. It didn't help get the job, but uh, <laughs> it's, it's nice to see. Ryan graduated from Silver Lake Kingston, grew up in Halifax. Um, I find this hard to believe it. From 2003 to 2006, Ryan was a corrections officer and a, and a sheriff down at the uh, Plymouth County. He's too nice a guy. I don't know how he did it. Um, in the 2006 to 2011, Ryan was a Halifax police officer, full-time police officer for his own uh, community. In the 2011, he transferred here to become a full-time officer. Ryan's received an associate's degree from Mass Massasoit Community College in criminal justice. He wears a lot of hats for us. Ryan's our cruiser maintenance person. He builds, maintains, and takes care of all of our cruisers. Um, he's assigned to the Southeast Mass Law Enforcement Council, the SEMLEC Search and Rescue Team, where probably gets called out two or three times a month throughout uh, 30 towns looking for missing people. Ryan's our safety net instructor and operator, a uh, tracking device for uh, autistic and people that tend to wander. Um, he's an instructor and an operator of that. He's assigned as our department's autism outreach officer. He's a liaison to the New England villages, something that uh, himself and Sergeant Reedy have been working on, uh, developing relationships with New England villages. 
Uh, he's also assigned to the bicycles, the boat, the ATV. And Ryan received a Mass Police Training Council Life Saving Award. He recently attended background investigation training, which he's going to find useful in the next couple of weeks. And he's attended Sergeant's basic training. So we're very fortunate to have Ryan Bardo as our newest sergeant. Sean? <laughs> sergeant Sean Reedy. He's here with his wife, Julie, his children, Tyler, Kyle, and Riley. His mom and dad, Richard Maureen, and his in-laws, uh, Eddie and Linda Flannery. Um, prior to coming here, and, and while he's here, he's got 24 years in with the uh, Army National Guard, and he's about as high as you can get. He's Command Sergeant Major, did I get that right? Hoorah. Uh, he's been deployed several times overseas, both to Iraq and to Afghanistan. He's uh, recently completed a two-year Sergeant Major Academy. Um, He's been awarded the Bronze Star Meritorious Service Medals, the Humane Service Medal for his work in Hurricane Sandy in New York, and the National Guard Defense Service Ribbon for his work with the Boston Marathon uh, bombing. In 2001-2006, Sean was a corrections officer with MCI Cedar Junction, and I actually did your background investigation. And uh, during that time, he was also a special for the police officer for the town of Rockland. And in 2006, we were fortunate to get uh, Sean to come over here and be a police officer. He's received the AAA Traffic Hero Award. He has received the Mass Police Training Council's Life Saving Award. He received a commendation uh, from the Trooper, Trooper George L. Hanna Award for Bravery and Valor. Sean is our Havamark School Liaison, and a program that they developed themselves. I, I have several, one in each elementary school. And the officers are given the latitude to, to fit in the best they can, and they all do a fantastic job. Um, he's a field training officer. He is a, assigned to the bicycle and ATVs. He takes care of the breath test machine and instructions on that. He's an autism outreach officer. He's a liaison to New England villages. He's the lead PT instructor for the Randolph Police Academy, so he trains all of our people that go to the police academy. Uh, he's recently attended background investigation training and attended the Sarge's basic training. So let's give a, a round to Sean. Yes. Raise your right hand, please. Hi, Ryan Bardo. Hi, Ryan Bardo. And I'm Sean Reedy. Hi, Sean Reedy. You solemnly swear. You solemnly swear. So I was faithfully and partially. I'm faithfully and partially. Discharge and perform. Discharge and perform. The duty is incumbent upon me. The duty is incumbent, incumbent upon, upon me. me. As a duly appointed sergeant. As a duly appointed sergeant. sergeant. For the Pembroke Police Department. For the Pembroke Police Department. In accordance with the bylaws of the town. In accordance with the bylaws of the town. The laws of the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. The laws of the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. In the United States of America. In the United States of America. The judge. He's a little bigger than you right now. He's <laughs> 14. <laughs> So Sergeant Bardo, Sergeant Reedy, the road to becoming a sergeant, you know, wasn't an easy one. The officers are required to pay for a statewide civil service exam on state laws, criminal sense, and common laws, criminalistics, community policing, supervision, leadership management, budgeting, finances. It's a lot, but you made it. We're not taking it away. It's a year-long balance, though, just in the study, and, and I'm sure that your balance probably outweighed your family time, and I, and I can imagine the families can understand that, all the effort you had to put in to get here. 
Um, and then just passing the test is an automatic. You actually have to have some openings and everything else and, and sometimes we're just not fortunate, sometimes we are. Um, but we need quality sergeants, we need people. So what's in store? You're now the junior sergeants. One of the many bonuses is you're probably going right back to midnight where you started. It's just the way it is. <laughs> so on day one, you're gonna wear many new hats, okay? You probably won't wear this one anymore because it's too hot, but you're gonna wear many. You're gonna be a coach. You're gonna play to the strengths of your uh, patrol officers and you're gonna support their weaknesses. You're gonna be a mentor. As you prepare yourself to be in a better position to be a supervisor through continued training and education, you need to share that with your troops so they become better patrolmen. You're gonna be an advocate for our organization. You are the most integral part of what we do. You have to make what we wanna do happen. And that's not always easy. But you're gonna be responsible for what's done on your shift and you're gonna be responsible for what's not done on your shift. You're also gonna be an advocate for your officers. You need to take care of their well-being and their growth as well as their fundamentals and training. You're going to be the busiest person on your shift. Shift strength the way it is, you're going to be a backup in, 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 as well as a sergeant. You're going to be on every call. That's a good way. You're going to learn everything twice as fast about being a sergeant. Kind of a bad thing because you're going to get worn out really quick, so pace yourselves. Your dedication, your service is going to earn your respect of your patrol officers, the gratitude of your administrators, your friends, your family, and your community. Congratulations to all of you. So that's all I have. I thank the board for coming out on an off night during your summer vacation and allowing us to have a one agenda meeting. Mr. Thorne, thank you for helping us work our way through the civil service to get to where we are. And everybody, thank you for coming and supporting your new offices, my new offices. And uh, there's some refreshments here. Ryan, your cake is chocolate because you want it to be different. <laughs> so I think we ought to have a standing ovation for the offices. Seventeen minutes, Sean. All right. Move to adjourn, Mr. Chairman. Second. So a motion, a second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Aye. None. This meeting is adjourned. Thank you all for coming in. Thank you. Great job, Chief. Thank you very much. I am. You are. I'm a friend. I'm Julie Reedy. Nice to meet you. She talks about you all the time at the baseball field. So now, I, now I know who you are.